Just a few months ago, scientists announced the San Andreas Fault is due for another major earthquake, specifically in Southern California, where there hasn't been a major quake since 1857. Satellites orbiting high above California have been quietly tracking subtle changes in the Earth's crust for years, feeding scientists a constant stream of data on the behavior of one of the most watched fault lines on the planet, the San Andreas Fault. Recently, those measurements revealed something that instantly captured the attention of geologists and seismologists alike. Over just a short span of weeks, satellites detected sudden shifts in the terrain along multiple segments of the fault, movements far larger and faster than typical background motion. These changes, invisible to the naked eye but undeniable in the radar data, have triggered an urgent wave of scientific concern. Before we start, hit the like and subscribe buttons for more exclusive news. The San Andreas Fault, stretching for hundreds of miles across California, is a tectonic boundary where the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate grind past each other. This slow-motion collision moving just centimeters per year has the potential to unleash catastrophic earthquakes when accumulated strain is suddenly released. Normally, the fault's creep, small, gradual slips, does not make headlines. But the sudden bursts of displacement now observed from space are not part of the typical pattern. They suggest a disturbance in the system, something that has altered the delicate balance of stress deep underground. The data, captured by advanced radar interferometry satellites, showed displacements on both horizontal and vertical axes in certain areas, with ground movements measuring several centimeters over just days. In geophysical terms, such abrupt motion is significant. It indicates that pressure along the fault is redistributing at a pace far faster than normal tectonic drift. Scientists are still interpreting exactly what triggered these shifts, but the alignment and locations of the changes point directly to underlying fault activity. The patterns don't match those produced by heavy rainfall, erosion, or surface landslides. Instead, they bear the fingerprint of tectonic stress reconfiguration, a phenomenon that can precede seismic events. This is not the first time satellites have spotted unusual movements along fault zones. However, what makes this moment unique is the combination of speed, magnitude, and geographic spread of the changes along the San Andreas. Several segments, some in the central portion, others closer to the southern reaches, appear to have been affected almost simultaneously. This simultaneous activity over such a wide area is rare. Historically, when such broad patterns emerge, it can mean that the fault is undergoing a large-scale shift in its stress regime possibly due to deep tectonic adjustments or interactions with adjacent fault systems. The precision of satellite monitoring allows scientists to see what ground-based instruments might miss. While GPS stations along the fault record continuous motion at specific points, satellites can produce sweeping images that reveal motion across vast stretches of terrain. In the latest observations, the colored bands in the interferometric maps showed sharp gradients, zones where the ground on one side moved differently from the other. Such gradients typically trace the underlying fault's path, showing exactly where the movement occurred. In several locations, these bands thickened and intensified over a matter of days, suggesting the acceleration of processes that usually unfold over years. The urgency in the scientific community stems from the fact that sudden shifts of this type can act as stress triggers. If one portion of the fault experiences rapid movement, the redistribution of strain can load adjacent segments with additional stress. In a system already under immense tectonic pressure, this can bring some sections closer to failure. In other words, the observed movements might be the fault's way of adjusting itself, relieving pressure in one area while loading it elsewhere. Such a sequence does not guarantee an imminent earthquake, but it does raise the likelihood that certain segments have entered a more unstable state. The Southern San Andreas Fault, in particular, has been of special concern for decades. This section, running from the Salton Sea toward the Los Angeles area, has not experienced a major rupture for over 300 years, far longer than its estimated recurrence interval for large earthquakes. Seismologists have repeatedly warned that this portion is locked, meaning it is stuck, accumulating strain that must eventually be released. The newly detected shifts extend into regions not far from this locked section, leading to questions about whether the stress changes could influence it. Even minor stress perturbations can have outsized effects if they occur near a segment already primed for rupture.
What makes the situation even more intriguing is the possibility that the shifts were triggered by processes occurring deep below the surface, far beyond the reach of direct observation. Fluids migrating through fault zones, subtle slow slip events, or deep tremor activity can all redistribute stress in ways that surface instruments cannot immediately detect. Satellites, however, capture the end result, the ground moving in response. By combining these satellite measurements with seismic records, GPS data, and computer models, scientists can begin piecing together the chain of events that led to the recent movements. This red alert does not come lightly. The scientific threshold for sounding such a warning is high. Researchers are trained to distinguish between transient harmless surface motion and the kind of tectonically driven displacement that can signal trouble ahead. The fact that multiple independent satellite passes confirm the changes removes much of the doubt. Each pass, taken from different orbital angles and at different times, corroborates the same areas of motion. This consistency strengthens the interpretation that what's happening is not a localized anomaly, but a genuine tectonic shift. Public concern often spikes when the San Andreas Fault is mentioned in the same sentence as unusual activity. Yet the role of scientists at this stage is to assess, not alarm. The red alert is not a declaration that a major earthquake will strike tomorrow or next week. Rather, it is a recognition that the fault's behavior has stepped outside its recent norms. The sudden acceleration of movement indicates that something fundamental has changed in the way stress is distributed along the fault. For planners, engineers, and emergency services, such alerts are signals to ensure readiness measures are in place, not because the timing of a quake can be predicted with precision, but because the system's state has shifted toward higher risk. The larger question now revolves around the mechanics behind these shifts. One hypothesis is that a slow slip event deep beneath the surface has been underway, and only recently has its stress influence reached shallower depths, producing measurable surface movement. Slow slip events can occur over days to months, quietly releasing strain without generating the strong shaking associated with earthquakes. Yet they can also alter the stress field in ways that make adjacent locked sections more likely to rupture. Another possibility is that microfracturing along hidden splay faults has temporarily accelerated, creating small but cumulative changes in the stress landscape. Interconnected fault systems complicate the analysis further. The San Andreas is not an isolated structure. It interacts with faults such as the San Jacinto, Garlock, and Hayward. Movements on one fault can cascade into others, triggering shifts that ripple across hundreds of miles. This networked behavior means that scientists must consider not just the San Andreas itself, but the entire tectonic framework of California when interpreting these satellite observations. The recent shifts may in fact be part of a larger regional adjustment affecting multiple faults simultaneously. Another aspect drawing attention is the depth at which the inferred movements originate. Satellite data primarily capture surface displacement, but models based on these displacements can estimate the depth of fault slip. Early interpretations suggest that some of the recent movements may stem from depths of 10 to 20 kilometers, deep within the brittle ductile transition zone where rock begins to deform more plastically. Activity at these depths is important because it often represents the interface between stable sliding and earthquake generating behavior. Changes here can influence whether strain is released gradually or catastrophically. Climate-related factors, while less likely in this case, cannot be completely ruled out without further analysis. Seasonal snowpack, groundwater extraction, and even atmospheric pressure variations can cause subtle ground shifts. However, these tend to have recognizable spatial patterns and correlations with environmental data. The current movements lack such correlations, leaning the interpretation toward tectonic causes. Nonetheless, scientists are careful to eliminate all possible non-tectonic explanations before committing to one. For the teams monitoring the San Andreas, this is a moment that tests the limits of predictive science. Earthquakes remain notoriously difficult to forecast, but recognizing precursory signals, if they exist, is a critical goal. These sudden shifts offer a rare opportunity to study the fault during a period of potential transition. Instruments across the state, from borehole strain meters to deep seismic arrays, are now scrutinizing the region for any sign of accompanying microseismic activity, changes in crustal fluids, or alterations in the magnetic field. 
Public communication during such a scientific moment is delicate. On one hand, there is a responsibility to inform communities that the false behavior has changed. On the other, there is the risk of creating undue fear when no specific prediction can be made. The red alert serves as a technical classification within the scientific and emergency management community, signaling heightened observation and readiness. It also prompts a flurry of data sharing between agencies, ensuring that any further changes are quickly recognized and assessed. The potential implications of the shifts extend beyond seismic hazard. Large-scale movements along major faults can influence groundwater systems, alter surface drainage patterns, and even impact infrastructure built across or near the fault. Bridges, pipelines, and rail lines designed to tolerate slow, predictable creep could face unexpected stress if movement rates accelerate or directions change. Engineers may be called to reevaluate the vulnerability of such structures in light of the new data. From a purely scientific perspective, the current situation provides an invaluable natural experiment. It allows researchers to test models of fault mechanics under real-world conditions, improving our understanding of how the San Andreas and similar faults behave under stress. Every satellite pass over the fault is now eagerly awaited, as each new image has the potential to reveal whether the shifts are continuing, accelerating, or stabilizing. Trends over the next weeks and months will be critical in determining whether the system is returning to its baseline state or edging toward a more significant release of energy. International collaboration plays a significant role here as well. Many of the satellites collecting this data are operated by agencies outside the United States, including the European Space Agency's Sentinel missions and Japanese radar satellites. The global scientific community has a vested interest in understanding fault behavior, not just for California, but for seismic zones worldwide. Lessons learned from this event could improve monitoring strategies for faults in Japan, Turkey, New Zealand, and other earthquake-prone regions. There is also a technological dimension to this alert. The ability to detect such subtle movements over wide areas is a testament to how far Earth observation has advanced. Just a few decades ago, such changes would likely have gone unnoticed until a seismic event made them apparent. Today, with radar capable of measuring millimeter-scale displacements, scientists can see the faults every twitch. This sensitivity opens the door to a more proactive approach to seismic hazard assessment, where warnings are based on physical changes rather than just statistical probabilities. As the data continues to pour in, researchers are also considering how deep Earth processes might connect to what's happening along the San Andreas. Mantle convection, the slow churning of hot rock far beneath the crust, can subtly shift tectonic boundaries over long time scales. While these processes operate far more slowly than the current shifts, their influence on plate boundary geometry can play a role in how strain accumulates. It is possible that deep-seated forces have reached a tipping point, nudging the fault system into a phase of accelerated change. Geological history reminds us that the San Andreas has produced sudden surprises before. Paleoseismic studies, analyses of ancient earthquake layers and sediments, show that periods of relative quiet can be punctuated by abrupt, intense activity. Sometimes, such bursts of motion are preceded by precursory signals, while at other times they appear without warning. The current shifts could represent the former, offering a glimpse into the fault's preparation stage before a significant event. Or they could be an isolated adjustment with no larger consequence. Regardless of which scenario unfolds, the presence of such a measurable and widespread movement pattern along the San Andreas is rare enough to merit intense scrutiny. It marks a deviation from the steady, predictable creep that characterizes some sections and from the locked, immobile state of others. In this transitional behavior lies both scientific opportunity and societal responsibility. The more scientists learn from episodes like this, the better equipped they will be to interpret the false signals in the future. Over the coming months, the focus will remain on integrating every possible source of information, satellite data, seismic readings, GPS records, and field observations, to construct the most accurate picture of what is happening. Whether the recent movements are the first act of a larger sequence, or a brief and self-contained adjustment, the fact remains that the San Andreas has just demonstrated its capacity for sudden large-scale change without warning. This alone is a reminder of the dynamic, restless nature of the ground beneath California. The red alert status underscores that this is a live, evolving situation. 
It will likely be a period of heightened observation, careful modeling, and ongoing discussion among geologists and emergency managers. Even in the absence of a clear forecast, the awareness generated by such an event is valuable. It renews attention on the importance of preparedness, scientific vigilance, and continued investment in the technologies that allow us to watch the Earth's most dangerous faults in unprecedented detail. One of the most compelling aspects of the current situation is the way it forces researchers to confront the complexity of fault zone physics. The San Andreas is not a clean singular crack slicing through rock. It is a system of overlapping strands, gouge zones, pressure ridges, and subsidiary fractures, each of which can behave differently under stress. Within this tangled architecture, stress doesn't move like water through a pipe. It propagates unevenly, guided by variations in rock type, fault geometry, and pre-existing weaknesses. When satellites detect sudden surface shifts, they are seeing the sum of countless micro-interactions at depth, each one influencing the timing and magnitude of future slip. The precision of modern orbital instruments means that these small surface deformations can now be linked with very specific features along the fault, such as bends where the fault trace changes direction, or places where it splays into multiple branches. These bends and splays are often critical points for stress concentration, and understanding their behavior is essential for predicting which segments might be more prone to sudden rupture. For instance, in restraining bends, areas where the fault curves in a way that resists movement, stress can accumulate more quickly, while releasing bends can experience localized uplift or subsidence that relieves some of the built-up energy. The latest shifts appear to interact with both types of structures, suggesting a more complex redistribution of forces than a simple linear slip. Another layer of intrigue is the role of lithospheric heterogeneity, the uneven nature of the crust and upper mantle in the fault region. Differences in temperature, mineral composition, and rock rigidity can create zones that either absorb or transmit stress differently. If the recent movements originated in a section of the fault underlain by hotter, more ductile rock that could explain the relatively smooth deformation patterns observed in certain satellite images. Conversely, in cooler, more brittle regions, stress transfer might lead to more abrupt and irregular surface motion. By combining thermal models with the displacement data, scientists can better determine which geological settings are most prone to translating deep tectonic changes into measurable surface shifts. The event also brings attention to the potential influence of long-term plate motion cycles. While the Pacific and North American plates have a steady average rate of movement, the speed and style of that motion can vary subtly over decades to centuries due to changes in boundary conditions far from California. Shifts in subduction zones along the Pacific Rim, for example, can have knock-on effects in how strain is partitioned across the western United States. If these larger-scale tectonic patterns are currently in a phase that directs more shear stress toward the San Andreas, it could help explain why multiple sections of the fault are responding at once. Even the surrounding sedimentary basins, such as the Los Angeles, Salton, and Central Valleys, play a role in modulating how the crust reacts to stress changes. These basins, filled with softer sediments, deform differently than the rigid mountain blocks flanking the fault. When strain is redistributed, these differences in material properties can cause stress to focus at the basin edges, potentially acting as hotspots for future seismicity. The current shifts by altering the stress landscape may be subtly reshaping these focus points. What emerges from all this is a portrait of the San Andreas as a living, evolving system, sensitive to influences from both its immediate surroundings and distant tectonic events. The sudden simultaneous shifts detected by satellites are not merely an isolated occurrence. They are a symptom of a fault network that is constantly rebalancing itself in response to forces both local and global. By capturing this moment in such high resolution, scientists are not just reacting to a potential hazard. They are seizing an opportunity to watch in real time the interplay of geology, physics, and deep earth dynamics that ultimately shape the seismic destiny of California. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, could you leave your comments below and tell us, what are your thoughts on the sudden San Andreas fault shifts detected by satellites? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.